Here we go. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh no. We're not going anywhere. Oh, oh, that was terrible. What was that? Oh, that was horrible. Oh, no. That was horrible. Oh, come on. God damn it. Zero hundred and <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Hi, Jacob. Oh, hey, Matt. After that little uh, skiddly winks we just did, um, what are we driving today? It's a bloody Havel Jolion Hybrid Ultra. Oh, this is the Ultra spec. Interestingly, Jacob, Havel have just fully updated their Havel Jolion. I feel like it kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, I did not see that coming. Yeah, they just completely released like an all new generation, but it's kind of not an all new generation, but there's so many changes, including that the price has gone down and clearly they've changed the looks. So today we're gonna take you for a full review of the new Havel Jolion Hybrid. Should you be buying one? That's what we're going to answer today. Going to check out the exterior, talk about practicality, the interior. We're going to launch it. This thing is a surprising amount of power. That it can't put down. That it can't Spoiler. put down very well. Uh, then we're going to give it lots of sauce. We're going to see just how well it drives. And then we're going to end on our final thoughts. Should you be buying a Havel Jolion Hybrid that you guys have non-stop requested us to review? And now it's time. <laughs> it's time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's quickly talk about the range and pricing because both of these are really really interesting so it's kind of been split into two there's the petrol variants which are mostly the same as before but with some new styling and then there are these the hybrids which look entirely new and they are completely new body panels and also new multi-link rear suspension which we'll come back to because that's both a good thing and a very bad thing but across the range prices have dropped between one to two thousand dollars so you can get into a Havel Jolly and petrol for twenty $26,990 drive away. That is insanely cheap. Insanely cheap. And there's more to it. I'll tell you in a sec. You can get into a hybrid starting at $32,990 drive away. And this top of the range, most expensive ultra is $38,990 drive away. Again, for the hybrid. However, at the moment, uh, GWM are offering even more of the price of Havel Jolions. Bro, they're going hard. They're going hard. About $1,000 more. So actually, it's a lot cheaper than before. And as always, if you want to get the absolute absolute best deals on one of these or any other new car, make sure you check out castles.com forward slash buy. As you guys know, we have a dedicated team of car buyers who go out there, make dealers, we have thousands of them, literally fight each other to get you the best deals. And because we charge them a fixed fee, it's zero cost for you. We also go in the hardest to get you the best price because it's in our best interest. So if that sounds good to you and you want one of these, that are actually in stock. Join our many happy customers at castles.com forward slash buy. It's worth it. All right, Daddy Jacob, let's talk about the design because- It's wild. It's wild. I don't think there's any other way to say it other than it's polarizing, to be honest. I love the way it looks from the front. I honestly, I think I hate the way it looks from the back. <laughs> I think hate's a strong word and I totally agree. Yeah, it's a real love-hate relationship I have with the styling and that's just because it's so aggressive and it looks entirely different. So let's start with the grill. So this looks like an AMG Panamericana grill. You've even got the chrome slats running down. You have a huge Havel badge with this very light blue inserts. Doesn't help we have the yellow New South Wales plates here. I mean, it continues, dude. There's like this huge splitter. I think I've never seen something so big other than on like an F1 car. It's very boy racer, isn't it? Yeah, with these like cowlings here, these spoilers that I don't know what they do, but I assume they help to streamline air across the side. Though interestingly, I'm pretty certain that because of all this extra aero to it, its drag has increased and therefore its fuel efficiency has reduced slightly. It's gone from like five liters to 5.1 liters per hundred kilometers. <laughs> That's so, kind of funny. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting and I do really like the way it looks from the front. I love how it's got like that shark grill to the front. Very aggressive, but it's also a lot. So I get why some people don't like it. There's LED lighting up here, very bright with LED turn signals. They're halogens if you go for the base model, but it really matters for a lot of people. And you have this LED daytime running light with some fake aero there as well. In fact, because it's hybrid, most of it is plugged up and aerodynamic Dynamics is the name of the game. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Let's check out the side. Let's do it. Okay, so what about the side of the Havel Jolion Hybrid? Well, you get these 18 inch alloy wheels here. Good size. I'm glad they're not much bigger because frankly, makes it more comfortable. Also wrapped in some decent tires. These Kumo Solus tires. They're good when you're doing anything other than launching them. Yeah, or driving in the wet. Yeah. 
uh, but otherwise they're actually a decent tie, so good choice there. You have a 360 camera, got a pretty decent 360 camera to it as well. I don't know what it is about Chinese cars, man. They just nail it every they, time with the cameras. Nail it, seriously. You have a aggressive side splitter here. You've also got keyless entry and go. Unfortunately, the keyless entry is only for the driver's door. I found myself trying to open the passenger door a few times. And Bro, I hate that. It was futile. <laughs> I <laughs> really don't like that. Futile. You've got very tinted privacy glass from the factory, which is cool, and blacked out door handles as well. It's so boy racery, man, this car. It really is. It's strange to me. I mean, just look at the rear, like, look at the rear angle right now. Well, it's just ridiculous. You know, let's talk about that. All right, let's talk about the bum because I think this is the most controversial and frankly, like, I'm all for strange designs, but this is just taking it to a the next level. Another level. Let's I, just get through this, bro. Yeah, let's, let's do it. So it's quite wide. In fact, it's wider than before and it's only really wide down here. So you, again, you've got these spoilers, these cowlings here for aerodynamics or at least drag according to the fuel efficiency. You have these LED lights here with an LED light bar. That does look really, really good. Really don't like the spoiler. It's a bit weird. It just doesn't look right to me. GWM badge there though, HEV for hybrid electric vehicle and the Jolion badge spelt out there. We've also got a very, very aggressive diffuser down the bottom, including some very, very fake, fake exhaust. But really that's not the worst part. And let's just get the worst part of this car out of the way. And that is they've done something good, which has had bad consequences. You see, they have completely changed the suspension setup in the rear. They've added multi-link suspension, which is far more comfortable than the torsion beam suspension they had before, but it does have a very negative impact on the packaging on the inside. So usually we take this out. This is the cargo cover. If you have it like this, this is our relatively small Pelican case. It takes up what, about a third of the boot space. Not that great. isn't great in the first instance. But even if we take this out, which by the way, there's nowhere to store this in the back. You'd have to leave this at home. Well, then you can see that we only get 255 liters of boot space, which is- That's abysmal. It's nothing. In fact, it's almost half of what it was before. And there's a couple of reasons and you can see it if you lift up this floor, which by the way, it's a flat loading floor, which is cool. But the multi-link suspension, as the name suggests, has multiple links and therefore is a big and bulky thing. And that unfortunately means that space on the sides have been pushed in and the battery has had to be repackaged and the battery now sits higher as well. And so we have a pretty large 1.67 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that lives under there and that is for the hybrid system. But unfortunately, all of this, the new multi-link suspension, the new battery, the 12 volt batteries back there as well. Well, that just means that the floor has to be raised really high and you lose a lot of effective space. You can drop the rear seat, which is great. However, it has something I've never seen before. Which, a reverse hump. A reverse hump where the top of the boot is higher than the seats. So interesting, I think it's gonna be a deal breaker to be honest for a lot of people who, well, if they need to put more than like one large suitcase in the back if you're going for a trip, certainly isn't gonna be great for Ubers, but I just think it's quite strange that the packaging has been so compromised. I think they should have just left the suspension as it was. Yeah, I think so, man. If it was gonna do that, let's check out the interior. Let's do it. Alrighty, Daddy Jacob. Oh yeah. De decent. That's decent. Let's talk about the interior space now because it hasn't really changed, but I don't actually think that's a bad thing. I've quite liked it for the most part. There are some things that aren't great, but we'll come to that. What's good? Well, you get soft touch material in a lot of places, which is very good. Helps to soak up a lot of road noise. There are some scratchy materials, which aren't great, but anyway, you're not going to be scratching your dash, so that's okay. The design as well is actually quite nice. In fact, it feels very premium, certainly looks very premium, and you do have quite a lot of smart stuff stuff in here. So your USB-C ports, I don't think they were on the driver's side before. They certainly are now, which is fantastic. Got a couple of USB-A's, you got a 12 volt socky walky, got heaps of space under this transmission tunnel. Your center armrest is nice and soft with heaps of space within there. Huge glove box, big door bins. So practicality is great. They've clearly done a great job there. Technology as well. If you like technology, well, you're going to get a lot of it. So up in front of you is a digital instrument cluster that it's not the most intuitive to use because for example, you have to learn to hold OK if you want to then use it. And you press the back button and it, it goes right, not left, which is counterintuitive. It's very strange. But it's just small things like that that you do get used to very, very quickly. Um, and once I've told you, well, now you know. And you can change the theme of it as well, which is pretty cool. The infotainment display is a big screen. Um, it's actually really, really fast and responsive. It has wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I do wish they were wireless, but anyway, it's a minor thing. The thing I don't love uh, that continues over is that the 
air conditioning controls, if you want to interact with them at all, they're not just on the screen. You have to press a button and then you can change the temperature. Usually I just leave it on auto and one temperature, so I haven't really engaged with it too much, but that's been fine. Other quirks with the screen, it's very much a Chinese car thing. If you want to turn on the heated seats, you can pull right and you can adjust uh, the heated seats from here. But if you want to turn on the single cooled seat, which is the driver's side, you seem to have to go into vehicle settings and then seat setting. It's just a lot There's of- too many steps. It's too many steps. And maybe you can customize it. I haven't quite figured out how to do that uh, through this display here, but um, I don't know. That's kind of annoying to me. Other than that, my annoyances are kind of over because I like this leather steering wheel. It feels very nice to hold in the hands. It's easy to use. You also get a heads up display, a panoramic sunroof. Uh, if you want to learn more about exactly what you get by grade, we've got that on our website right now, carsource.com, a full written review. Suffice to say, they throw a lot of features for the money into this Havel Jolyon, and that's a fantastic thing. Down to these seats. So they're a faux leather, but they do feel very, very nice. Both sides, passenger and driver, are automatically adjusting, which is great. The only thing I don't love is I feel like my legs just don't have enough support underneath them. I'm 5 foot 11 for reference. If only the base could just lift up a little bit more. We, we've said this about other Havels, haven't we? And yeah. I do wish that there was lumbar support as well. Me too. But they are fixing this in their newer cars. So perhaps the next generation of this, despite this having just been updated, will get that. You have a wireless Qi charger here, which is fast charging too. A little storage area there. Another storage area where you can fit your phone, I found. And then a very thin storage area there. Under this brushed aluminium look thing here, you've got a couple of cup holders, though one is admittedly quite small. And new for this Havel Jolyon Hybrid is ambient lighting in the door, which you can change to be like pulsing. You can change it to dance to your music. Or to your podcast, or, whatever you're listening to. Yeah, exactly right. Whatever you want to bop to, it can help you out. Speaking of, <gasps> how's the sound system? Not great. Yeah. It's not great. The only way I could get it to sound okay was to put the sound setting on DTS sound quality on. Down to sound. The DTS Locatsa. I don't think that that has been translated correctly. Has been translated correctly. But in that case, it sounds okay, but it's, yeah, it's not gonna blow your mind. But again, 38,990 at the absolute top of the range. You can get it for cheaper right now through carsource.com forward slash buy. I don't know, man. I, it's, it's hard to complain when you put things into perspective. Yeah, you're getting a bloody hybrid SUV for under four grand for under 40 grand that comes fully equipped you'd be getting cloth seats if you're lucky in a rav4 at this price point so yep. let's check out the back seat all righty daddy oh was that a better thong than up front sounded a little bit better um this is scratchy material but this is all nice and soft which is good to see i like it back here man in fact i think i like it more than up front really <laughs> so Five foot 11 again. I've got so much leg room. I've got heaps of toe room, heaps of headroom. And this is something that Jolion has always done really well. It's the packaging, especially for back seats. It's fantastic. My legs are at a better angle than up front. The seats just seem to be a bit deeper at the back, a bit higher at the front. So I've got good leg angle. Very nice. Uh, speaking of these seats, they do feel very, very nice indeed. Again, faux leather. Pull down the center arm. It's nice and soft. A couple more cup holders. Amenities galore. A couple of air vents. A couple of USB A ports. Storage area. Map pockets. It's kind of nice back here, man. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to critique, right? Especially at this price. Yeah, again. I mean, maybe it'd be better with USB-C ports, but that's kind of reaching. Yeah, and also, I don't know why they couldn't have just mounted these back seats a little bit more forward, gotten a little bit more space into the back, and we wouldn't have complained. So All that would have done is move the hump slightly further back. Yeah, but we would have gotten maybe 10 more litres of boot space. True. Anyway, let's launch it. Let's do it. <laughs> Alrighty, friend, it's time to launch the GWM Havel Jean Leon Hybrid. The new that was that took a long time. Fist, I, my fist was ready for a while, bro. I think we might have launch control. I think we might also wheel spin. Oh, launch control unavailable. Oh, you good. have to disable the ESP, friend. How does one do that? Oh, you gotta go. Oh, driving. here it is. Here it is. Here oh, it is. Oh god. Okay, here we go. I can't believe we have launch control. Fist me one more time. Launch control fist. Here we go. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh no. We're not going anywhere. Oh, oh, that was terrible. What was that? Oh, that was horrible. Oh, no. That was horrible. Oh, come on. God damn it. God damn it. Okay, this would be a lot faster if it wasn't wet <laughs> and it didn't do that. Uh, zero to 110.19 seconds. <laughs> We've done better. And honestly, it could do better, oh. but it's not going to do it today. All right, Jacob, let's drive it normally. All righty, Dadwa. Did you forget my name for a second there, bro? No, I went French. Um, okay. I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to do it. Oh, that is some pretty instant torque from that electric motor. Uh, yeah, look, this thing, it's actually quite fast. What's under the bonnet? Mate, it's got a bloody 1.5 litre, four-cylinder. 
petrol engine, which makes 70 kilowatts of power, 125 newton meters of torque. Then you've got the electric motor. Hey, don't stray. Man, I'm so sorry. Turn, turn that off. Yes you or no? Me. Yes or no? All right, no, no, no difference. I'll tell anyway. you. I'll tell you what the electric motor makes. Shut up! Shut up! I haven't even been driving this car a week. You have. Uh, anyway, just this is already annoying me. The electric motor makes 115 kilowatts of power, 250 newton meters of torque. Put that together, you get 140 kilowatts of power, 375 newton meters of torque, and this is a slippery road, friend. Oh, oh God! Yeah, but we're in a Havel Jolly and Hybrid with new multi-link rear suspension. Oh, that'll really help with the understeer. You know what? Kind of does. It's not too bad. So yes, uh, a lot going on there. It's also got a two-speed. Oh, Shut. Okay. Okay. Bro, I can't. I, I can't do I'm this. Done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna with quit this system. Intelligent ability. Fatigue. Distract off. off. That's this eye monitor that always loves to go off. The other thing that we have to do is go into here. Intelligent driving. By the way, all of this taking your eyes off the road. Keep lane on urgent. Okay. Get okay. Off. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Foot down. Now we have a car behind us. Great. Look what's happened. We are holding up traffic. Ugh. The worst part of this car we're gonna get out of the way, it's the driver safety stuff. It's just not tuned for Australia. It can't even pick up lanes. I, I can't tell you why. It just cannot pick up lanes. And the emergency lane keep constantly says, I'm hey, going straight. Yeah. Then there's the, hey, don't stray. That's a bit silly. It's just, you press yes or no, they both lead to the same thing. And then the eye monitor. I feel like, hey, don't stray would be more fitting for the lane keeping assist, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Potentially. But anyway, let's talk about how this thing drives because frankly, it it's does, right. it drives totally fine. And that's what I like about it. In fact, we swipe across from here, we can put the car into, oh, sport mode. It flashes the lights to let everybody know. We've just entered sport we mode. We have entered sport mode. The steering does become quite a bit heavier. It actually is quite a sharp, like, turn up. It, it's quite good, surprisingly good around these corners. Hey, it's actually, wow, it's got a bit of pickup. That we, torque is. Yeah. Incredible. Well, when the electric Ooh. motor is more powerful than the engine, yeah, you just get this insane amount of instant torque. I will say, in terms of fuel economy, which is mm. why most people want to buy a hybrid, if we hold down the OK button here, um, 6.7 litres per 100 kilometres. Now, mm. that is a lot of highway driving. It's also urban driving, and that's OK. If you were in a RAV4, you'd be getting probably like 6.1 litres per 100 kilometres, yep. so it's actually not too bad. I have seen it jump up around town, though, to about 7.5 mm. litres per 100 kilometres, so it's not the most consistent, but no. I I will say it is still quite fuel efficient for a mid-sized SUV. And I think the reason it's a bit inconsistent is is because the petrol engine is so underpowered. It does have to really work hard sometimes. And that's yeah. kind of the trade-off you're getting for going for a more powerful electric motor. You're going to get a trade-off in fuel efficiency, I think. I will say it's quite comfortable and I think Very I'm noticing it to be more comfortable than before thanks to it switching out from a torsion beam rear to a multi-link. RIP boot space though because that really is not very good. Bro, oh no, 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 no. Here we are. The saucy, saucy, bloody saucy corner. corner. We're still in sport mode. Tickle. Okay. Little, little finger tickle. Here Let's we go. go. Oh, go, go, go. Good tyres, not wheel spinning. Fantastic. That was a problem of the other one, wasn't it? It just oh loved to wheel spin. This thing has like loads of power. Oh God. Oh, oh yeah, we just we're fully going understeer. <laughs> Had to let off the accelerator there. Don't worry, Jacob, I'm now a Nürburgring fiend. Oh, I believe you, I believe you. I've seen you on the sim. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, look, the second corner was a lot better. I it think you, you realized the speed you had to take that. But also it's wet today, so yeah. it can't really take marks off. One more thing actually about the driver safety stuff, because there is an unfortunate glitch in the system. It mm. will like always keep you four distances away. So what I mean by that is if we turn on our cruise control we set it you can see the distance there on the screen you can extend it right so you can have a four three two or one but it always despite what your setting is it always keeps it at on four. the furthest distance and yeah. that's really quite annoying when you're on the highway and you want to sit in the fast Jack lane Lord. for example you can't do it no. but I will say this thing does have better lane centering than it did before if we mm -hmm. press the button again and reset it you can see that we have a steering wheel there, and this thing will essentially drive itself down a highway, keep you a very, very safe distance from the car in front of you, <laughs> but at least it's got it. Yeah. And I think that that's the moral of the story with this car, is mm. that it's not perfect in any no. way. However, for its price point... Yeah, you, you kind of do, you do get everything. It's just you don't get the highest quality everything. You know what I mean? Like, it's gonna do everything, but it's not gonna do everything that well. But it does it fine. Yeah. And I think for the price, actually, it's totally adequate. And I think, like, for people that are upgrading their cars, they might have a car that's five or 10 years old. This will probably feel pretty damn good. Oh, the light years ahead of anything else I have. Yeah. All right, let's get to our final thoughts. Let's do it. All righty, friend. 
Final thoughts on the Havel Jolion Hybrid. Bro, that was a bit scary. Should you buy one? I do think you should get one. But honestly, I don't think you need to go for the Ultra. I would go for either the entry level or the midway. And then I think you're getting a really, really good value hybrid family SUV. It comes with compromises. I don't love the fact that there is almost no space in the boot. Like it's genuinely, I would almost say terrible. It's, I would say probably a deal breaker for most people. For a lot of people, you have to check it out and make sure that you can live with it. But if you can, I think you're getting a lot of car for not much more money than an MG3 hybrid. That's very which, true. Which says a lot. But let me know what you guys think about the Havel Jolien hybrid down in the comments section below. Would you get this or would you go straight for the pet pool version, which starts so much cheaper? And of course, if you want the best deals possible and you want to take advantage of this thing's good price at the moment, the extra price cut it has, make sure you check out castles.com forward slash buy and my team will help you get that price. All right, Jacob. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.